Hi guys, it's album review time. We've got The Raven Age and Blood Omen. This is the third album by this English metal band. And they're not just a normal metal band, guys. They are a brilliant mixture of modern metal with some classic metal elements as well. This is a brilliant album. We've really been looking forward to it. I've only delved a little bit into The Raven Age's uh, past discography, just a little bit. Um, and I saw them live once as well at Download. Really impressive them at Download as well. And like I said, I've really been looking forward to this album. And I've got to say, man, it is absolutely fantastic. It's quite a short album. It's only nine tracks. The first track is like an intro as well. It does come and go like very quickly, but in a way, I think it's the perfect length for an album. I literally got to track nine. I wanted to put it back to track one. That's how an album should be. Leave you wanting more. Leave you wanting more. And that's exactly what this does. This album's heavy. It's melodic. It's modern. With, like I said, those touches of classic metal mixed in. It's brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. My head was going. It's groove laden as well. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to... I don't mean to have a go at other bands in my reviews. But I'm going to do a little bit here. Because... Me for one, and not everyone, this, this album that I'm going to talk about that's already been released this year has been raved about a little bit. And that's fine. I love it when people are happy about their band's releases. That You know, I love it when I'm happy. So that that's fine. But my view is that Avenged Sevenfold this year really missed a trick in, in my book. And I'm, I'm not saying this band sound exactly like Avenged Sevenfold, The Raven Age, but you can somehow sort of put them in the same wheelhouse, I would say. I could imagine them a few years ago going out on tour together, for instance. I'm not sure if they have, but I can imagine they would. And um, what I didn't get from Avenged Sevenfold this year, what I wanted, I got right here with this band. And I'm so happy about that. Because you know what? You can sound inventive without sounding pretentious. And that's how that Avenged Sevenfold album sounds to me. This one doesn't at all. It just sounds really inventive, but it's really melodic and it's heavy and it gives you everything you'd want from Avenged Sevenfold. I'm a bit disappointed in them, but I'm happy now because I've got what I wanted with this band. Excellently constructed tracks, gorgeous intros. There's quite a few really cool intros that on this album. Like a few of the tracks are like quiet little intros and it builds up and... But then it sort of wastes no time getting to the heaviness in parts as well. Loads of light and shade. In other words, there's some really nice, quiet, beautiful bits. And then it gets heavy, ultra heavy. Very cool. There's a lot to digest as well. This is really technical, this album as well. And like I said, you could be technical and clever and amazing musicians. And you can also have the songwriting. And that's what this band give you. Amazing songwriting. And they're British. So that makes me even more proud. So in the band, you've got George Harris. Um, if anyone doesn't know, he's the Steve Harris's son. He's on the guitar. Um, amazing musicianship across this album, along with Tommy Gentry is also on the guitar. They swap about, there's little twin lead melodies and man, this is just guitar. Guitar driven stuff. There is some synths laid about. I'm not sure who does the synths. It doesn't actually say there's a synth player as far as I could see. I was looking on Wiki though, so who knows? Um, but the guitars are just amazing. They're really up in the mix. They're really crunchy. And when they hit hard, they fucking hit hard. So amazing guitar work on this album. You've got Matt Cox on the bass, Jai Patel on the drums. The rhythm section is is outstanding there's some really cool fast parts on this there's some really great double kick stuff they are proper in the groove in that pocket that you want the rhythm section to be then you've got matt james on the vocals i love his vocals man he really does sound british as well which i like he's not trying to sound like anything he's not he's got a great vocal it's quite powerful it's quite modern sounding again he does some great vocal melody lines throughout this album and i love the way his vocals sound like I said, in some less heavy parts and the way he builds up the aggression to the song. I think he adds a lot of um, energy to these songs as well. He is outstanding. So I love, the band sound amazing. They sound, like I said, they sound really refreshing. They don't sound like they're stuck trying to find something that happened 40 years ago. They're not trying to really relive anything, but they understand taking um, parts from that time that time in music is there's nothing wrong with that but 
they are a modern band and so melodic. So guys, I'm going to run through the tracks. Um, we start off with Changing of the Guard, which is like a two and a half minute intro. It's like acoustic guitar, orchestral parts. Sounds a bit like a movie score, actually. Then we go into the first proper song, if you like. It explodes into the track Parasite. The green and mutation was fading to all. There is no selfie. This is a single. I reacted to this one. It's fast and medium paced throughout. Oh, man. That riff hits so hard. The verses are fast and frenetic. It beautifully transitions into a half time speed chorus. It's heavy, it's dark, it's melodic. Blistering solos on this song and that ending riff, man. There's a riff that plays out. It's so dense and heavy and neck breaking. It's just excellent. A brilliant slice of modern melodic metal. And then the second track is Serpent's Tongue. I actually did a reaction to this. It didn't make it through on YouTube. It got taken down. Couldn't even upload it, which was a real shame. This is a great track. Um, medium to fast paced, this one. Ultra heavy riffs continue on this track, but easily one of the most catchiest songs you will hear this year. It's amazing. The chorus is huge. The heavy groove this track has is so fucking infectious. I noticed as well in this band, the backing vocals are a huge part of the band's sound. They're all over this track. It's an excellent single, an excellent song. Essence of Time is the next track. So it slows down a slight touch here. We get acoustic guitar at the beginning, a vocal start, then the band kick in at the 40 second mark. Brilliant use of light and shade, like I said at the beginning of this review, um, to really ramp up the heaviness when the heavy parts come. It's a bit slower paced, like I said, than the first couple of tracks, but no less heavy. It, it, even more heavy, you would say. A great use of synths as well, alongside the crunchy riffs. Another huge chorus. The band is so hooky. The, the hooks are all over this. Great songwriting. Nostradamus is the next track. Priest fans, don't let that put you off. Um, another quiet opening. Man, this band sounds so brilliant when they kick in. They really sound dynamic, they do, on this on this album. I thought the bridge to the chorus, the bridge to the chorus is so catchy, I thought it was the chorus. And then the chorus hits, and you realise that that's even catchier, and the hook is even bigger. And the band work in that light and shade that they do so well, just after an amazing solo. A brilliant track. Forgive and Forget is the next track. I think this is the new single. It got released on release day. A great choice for a single as well. I think the band are very clever at hitting like a wide audience with their brand of metal. I really do. This song shows that as well as sounding modern and probably, you know, appealing to a younger metal audience. But the melodic side will also appeal to the older audience like me. Um, it just put, I can see it pulling all types of uh, metal lovers in. I really can. They definitely hit hard for all fans, in my opinion. To sound so fresh, it's a hard in itself. It's really hard to sound fresh and inventive. And I think the band do it perfectly on this song. The Journey is the next song. This is actually a ballad. So it's the first time we get a real ballad. Piano and acoustic guitar and some beautifully sang melodies are the, in the first minute of this song. I was expecting another heavy track. The first time I listened to it, I thought, oh, it's not going to be a ballad because we've had the sort of quiet parts before. But no, it is a proper ballad and it's an outstanding ballad as well. Beautifully constructed, that piano sort of tinkering alongside a lot of the song with guitars crashing in, slightly quiet because of the ballad type it is. You know, it's not, the guitars ain't coming in full, heavy, crunchy. Um, it's brilliant. The vocal emotion on this song is matched by an extremely heartfelt solo. It's amazing. An amazing ballad and perfectly placed on the album at track seven as well. Then we move on to track eight, War in Heaven. This is heavy stuff, man. A classic metal riff hits hard in the verses. I've said it before, in a world where modern metal seems to be about shouting and screaming all the time, this band have so much heaviness, but can hit even harder with intricate melodies and singing. Imagine that, a modern metal band singing. It's amazing. There is some very cool ultra fast parts dotted around in this track. Really precise and expert musicianship. A great song. Then we move on to the last track, 
Tears of Stone. This is six minutes and 34 seconds long, an epic closer. When it kicks in proper, this track at the one minute mark, it has sort of got like a great sort of folky element to it. I've obviously mentioned George Harris, which is uh, Steve Harris's son on the guitar. And I think he's one of the main songwriters, if not the songwriter, I'm not 100% sure. But um, obviously Maiden have got that folky element. This is the first time really I thought of Maiden when I when I was listening to this album. I loved how, you know, they, they could have come along and just been a Maiden carbon copy, but totally not totally their own band but this is the first time i heard those little folky melodies and thought of thought of maiden because that's what maiden sounded a lot like now um but it's definitely not maiden though um the verses are extremely heavy on this one with some amazing double kick drum um work it leads to another amazing hooky chorus the synth work here again it really adds depth to the track there's a transition in here into the solo section it's just brilliant it's just perfectly executed and then the solo section itself is just world class and then when I, I really got that transition was amazing and I was thinking about that as the solo was happening and then the transition that goes from the solo into the chorus is perhaps even better as it sort of slows down going back into the song a final track that is perhaps perhaps the highlight of an amazing album so guys, this is one brilliant album. This is available everywhere now. It was released last Friday. It's called Blood Omen. It's from the amazing metal band at the Raven Age. Check this out, guys. I think you're going to love it. I'll see you soon.